So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today on Human Resources for the People, we've got uh, three questions out of uh, the Ask HR Reddit page because I'm banned. I've been doing this for a long time, and this is part of the series on answering these HR questions and resolving them. We've got an interesting one about a PIP in Michigan, a work from home question in New York, and finally a new position created in Colorado that's important to Colorado. Uh, let's get right into it. Let's get going. So uh, in Michigan, this person, uh, you know, was on a high, high, allegedly a high performing employee for five and a half years, moved into a new job, struggling with training, uh, the first person ever to be trained for the role. And the they were having trouble understanding the expectations, etc. And then sent an email uh, that was confusing and uh, accusatory. Uh, you can read the accusatory uh, email down below, pause it if you'd like. Not real interested in rehashing it personally. Um, but you can you can read what it looks like. And the main question is, can I get put on PIP or fired for the email? And the answer in the United States is, as long as it's not for a retaliatory or discriminatory reason, you can pretty much in the United States be fired for anything. Um, you know, if the company prefers red shoes and you have blue shoes, if they don't like that you eat a certain food, you can be terminated under the current laws of the United States. Now, will they? Should they? Do that, does that make sense? No, not really. Um, but it, it can it can happen. Um, in this one, for this specific email, I wouldn't put anyone on a PIP because PIPs generally indicate longer range performance issues, not just a simple email. But I, I can imagine that this PIP or all the information surrounding uh, Sorry, I can imagine that this email and all the information surrounding this email would probably indicate you being on a PIP, not the email itself. Uh, wouldn't terminate for this email, but I also don't know the situation. Uh, this would probably receive some sort of documented coaching or discussion, but I, I do think that this email probably signifies something um, seriously more at foot uh, than just the email in and of itself. The next question is from a disabled job seeker in New York. They're a disabled combat veteran and medically require work from home accommodation. Should they only be looking for jobs that are remote or should they also apply for jobs that are on site? You can apply for jobs on site, but the ADA does not uh, reign supreme. You know, it's not a situation where uh, just because it's a job that you're being accommodated for that it means it needs to go off site. And so what that ultimately means is that you could get deep in the process where you're being chosen for a job. And if the company can't accommodate you being off site, they can't accommodate you being off site. There's no, there's no requirement for them to do that. It's only a reasonable accommodation. And so you would be wasting your time, the company's time and everyone else involved uh, just for applying for those jobs. So yes, I would stick to looking for jobs that are remote. You have every right to request an accommodation for jobs that are on site, but you may end up just wasting your time. And that's unfortunate, especially in a tight job market like now. The next one I think is really interesting because it really speaks to the problems with some of the new labor laws that I've covered here on the channel and elsewhere. A new position was created in Colorado given uh, without being internally posted and should I file a complaint. So for context here, because it's important, the Colorado pay transparency law requires employers to provide hourly or salary compensation or a range in all job postings, include a general description of all benefits and other compensation, and most importantly with respect to this one, make reasonable efforts to alert existing employees of promotion opportunities. The fine is five hundred is between five hundred dollars and ten thousand dollars for each violation. However, as of July of last year, there has only been three employers that have uh, caught fines for the pay transparency wage transparency law. This position came with a twenty three thousand dollar increase, significant jump, but was never posted or announced internally. This person is sure that it's illegal under the Equal Pay for Equal Work Act in the state of Colorado and the finance director is either unaware what they did is illegal or they simply don't care. Uh, my question is what would happen if I filed, uh, filled a complaint with the state of Colorado? Well, if they were found to be in violation of it, they would receive a fine of anywhere from $500 to $10,000, although I think it's much going to be much closer to $500 uh, if they're even going to enforce it. Um, and that'll be it. 
Um, so you, the people, because this is a municipal government, the people of whatever town uh, you, you work for will have to pay $500 for this miscue, and then um, that'll be it. it. The question is, is it worth doing, or should I just let it go? And you know, that's, that's up to you if you want to find the people of that municipality $500 for it, then it's absolutely you know, worth doing. Go to the Colorado Department of Labor uh, and Employment and let them know what happened. I think there's a website that you can do there and that it is, that is what it is. This is more elevated to give a, a general complaint. I mean, this is an internal promotion. Uh, they gave a person a huge raise and uh, from an admin assistant, which... <laughs> I mean, like, this is a municipal department, but I, I, I think that that's a very small one, it seems like. But I, I think that is a little crazy from what from what this person is uh, talking about. And so, you know, either the state of Colorado needs to, or the federal government needs to create more tooth uh, laws that have more teeth to them, or you need to stop electing people who have toothless, you know, toothless legislators, right? Because that's the crux of this. Um, there isn't much value in complaining. But but you can uh, you can to the Colorado uh, Department of Labor and Employment and that would be the process. I personally would let it go and hope that my lawmakers are a little bit more uh, have a little bit more teeth to them. Uh, that's it. What do you think about uh, these questions today? It it gives me an interesting insight into the current uh, status of the the job market. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the, on the next video. Bye, guys.